When developing systems as part of a team or on your own, organizing your code is arguably the most important task. However, doing so cannot always be obvious, especially when using tools such as GameMaker Studio, which don't always enforce robust code. Hi, I'm Felix from GMWolf, and it's time to talk about object orientation. Before we look at how OO can be used in GM, it's quite important to understand just what an object is in broader programming terms. Objects are entities that have a state represented by variables called fields, behavior, as in the code that the object can execute by the object, and identity, meaning you can have multiple instances of an object, each with their own state. By manipulating what code is visible outside of your object, you can create a fourth component, an interface. The interface of an object is often composed of a set of methods or scripts that can be called to manipulate the object state. This allows other objects to interact with and change the state of another object. For example, you may have a player object with a set of methods to move it in all four directions which could be called by a user input object. It may seem rather futile at first, as you could directly manipulate the state of the object by accessing the variables directly, but this kind of abstraction can greatly improve the quality of your code. Consider an object representing a circle. We could either store its radius or its diameter. If another object had to determine its area by looking at a stored variable, it would have to know what dimensions the object stored in order to use the correct formula. By implementing a method that returned the area of the circle, you no longer need to worry about what implementation the object is using once you are done creating it. This kind of abstraction is called polymorphism and is an integral part of OO design. In GameMaker Studio, the interface of an object is essentially its events. Each event is a different method that can be invoked by another object. This is great as it means that the engine can call relevant events such as the step event or keyboard events when needed, but it does limit you to the predefined events in GameMaker. There are user events that have been reserved such that they would never get called by the engine. However, you are limited to 16 user events and they do not have any meaningful name, making it harder to keep track of code, not to mention they are only able to manipulate an object's state without returning any values. These issues can easily be remedied by using scripts that directly call the user event. Putting all your code into the script directly is also a viable solution and allows your method to return values, but as we are about to see, this can also come with its own issues. By using scripts, we lose the polymorphism we described earlier, and so all objects being acted on by the script must use the same implementation. An appropriate way around this is to use a switch statement to define what code to run depending on the object. This can be done in a single script. However, I prefer to organize my code in several scripts, with the main abstract script switching between the specific implementations. This allows for a lot more flexibility than using user events, whilst preserving polymorphism. However, it does require more work, as when adding a new implementation, you must remember to add scripts for each method and include them in the abstract method. Polymorphism is but one aspect of object-orientated design and plays hand in hand with another powerful tool, object composition. In essence, Composition allows you to define one object as a collection of other objects. Consider a game where a player object can pick up different guns, each with their own mechanics. It is tempting to have a variable to define the gun type and have a large switch statement where all the gun code is held. This is terrible design as it yields very long code that may be harder to read and if guns have distinctly different behavior, you may end up with multiple events in the player object just for one type of gun. By using object composition, you could design multiple gun objects, one for each in-game gun. Each gun would have its own behavior. You could then instantiate gun objects as needed and assign them to the player object. If polymorphism is used, you can even have the player object invoke methods from the gun object, regardless of what gun is currently in use. 
This can drastically cut down on needed code and make your code neater in the process. You may argue, however, that because of the large number of objects you have to create when taking composition into consideration, you will end up duplicating a large amount of code. This is when a major feature of object-oriented design comes in, inheritance. Inheritance allows some object to inherit and build upon the behavior of another object. In the case of the previous example, we could have a parent gun object with the code needed to display the object, and have all the children objects describe the weapon behavior only, cutting down on the code you have to write. By using inheritance properly, we can greatly improve the quality of your code, as you can describe some aspects of an object in a more basic form, allowing you to reuse it if you have to implement another similar object. By wielding object orientation in these three ways, you should be able to build much more robust code, and any extra time spent building inheritance trees or building up interfaces does pay off in the long term as your project gets larger. So hopefully you guys have found this short talk on object orientation useful, and if you have, please let me know by liking this video. If not, you can dislike it and tell me why in the comments below. The comments is also where you can tell me if you want more of these type of videos or not, and post any good suggestions you may have. If you found it so great that you would like to see everything else I produce, you can click that subscribe button too. Anyhow, I've been Felix from GMOF and I'll see you guys next time.